We're living in complicated times, and there's complicated people. I call them scripture twisters. And uh, it's good for you to know what these twisters do to scripture. Uh, that's not tongue twisters. They're scripture twisters. They just twist them around. Uh, I'm a member, I didn't know if I told you this, of the Society of St. Francis of Assisi. They honored me with that when I was in Rome the last time, or Naples, actually. One thing, everybody remembers St. Francis for how much he loved uh, animals. And all of the St. Francis pictures and statues and everything, he's got birds flying around him and little animals coming up, and he's feeding them all. And they also remember the work that he did for poor people. How he would uh, literally take the Bible where it said, cleanse the leper. He would go find lepers and he'd actually give them a bath and cleanse them. <laughs> and uh, they thought he was crazy. But here's why they really hated him. I'm talking about religious people. He said, follow the word, not the interpretations. Well, that just killed the denomination he was in because all they ruled by was interpretations. I don't even know if they ever read the word. They read the interpretations. Christians, believers, listen to me now. This is good advice from a 75-year-old man who's lived a long time, been around the world seven times, preached in every country that you can probably think of. I've been beaten, stoned, shot, cut, stabbed, left for dead more than once in many countries, not just one. But take this advice from me, please. Throw all your books away. Throw all your books away that were about the Bible and read the Bible. All the books about the Bible are completely opinions. It's not scripture. I don't care what denomination it comes from. Throw your books about the Bible away. Throw your commentaries away. The Bible is plain enough. They'll give you hermeneutics and exegesis and uh, uh, homiletics. and uh, They got names for all the lies that they tell that comes out of their minds. It doesn't come from God. It comes from man. Throw them away. Well, I can't understand this. I bet you understand exactly what God wants you to understand. Because I'm going to tell you some things that are important today. I've had people tell me, well, that's the natural interpretation of it. And this is the physical interpretation of it. And that's a spiritual interpretation. Some people are so spiritual, they can't read what the Bible actually says. Some people are so practical that they ignore the Scripture completely and some people are so natural into the natural mind they honestly cannot see what God who is a spirit by the way what kind of a book would a spirit write I would say it'd be a spiritual book <laughs> and you have to get in the spirit to understand it I'm telling you right now don't mistake the words of man for God's words that's good advice. Now, when you're having discussions with somebody, that's different. You can say, just supposing it meant this. Uh, what if it means this? Or my theory is this. I think it means this. Those are all all right. Go ahead and do all that all you want to. But don't try to change what the meaning of the Bible is. Jesus says some things very plainly. Very plainly. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. I don't need no interpretation of that. Can anybody say amen? amen. You don't have to have a class and explain to me what that means. Nor you. You've already experienced it anyway. <laughs> you already know what it means. Hey, you've had the practical application. It was already applied to you. Amen? And then, how, how about, uh, 
uh, everybody look at me now because I'm going to terrify some of you because your religious foundation and all of those theories that you built your life on are in jeopardy right now. The reason Jesus came into this world was not to save everybody. It says that the world through him might be saved. If you want to know what Jesus actually came into this world to do, he came to baptize believers with the Holy Ghost. That was it. He said, this is my purpose here, is to fill you with the Spirit, so that the works that I do shall you do also, and greater works than these shall you do, because I go to my Father. I am going away, and he is going to send you the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, that he will abide with you forever. That's why Jesus came, to fill believers with the Holy Ghost. The reason there are denominations who are built on the fact that they hate speaking in tongues. They hate anything called a baptism of the Holy Ghost. And they have interpretations that tell you why that is not true. Why it's not for us today. These are called apologetics. Their, their terms are, are ridiculous to me. Amen. And uh, you li listen, <laughs> the two years at Thomas Beckett University in Canterbury, England, right here, what I'm trying to tell you is this, that everything they told me was totally worthless because of this one reason. They didn't believe in salvation through Jesus Christ. The Archbishop of Canterbury doesn't even believe that Jesus can save anybody. So I'm going to listen to him. What moron in religion have you been listening to? I know there's a lot of them out here. There's people that want to be able to explain to you why COVID virus is worse than the common flu, even though the common flu killed more people this year than the virus did. But they don't, you hear anything about that? Here, wear this mask to keep you from catching a cold. No, they don't say anything about that. But they got their reasons, and I know what their reasons are. And it's all control. That's it. I've never worn a mask except when I robbed a bank. You say, Brother Ross, did you rob a bank? Oh, yeah, I did. <laughs> Erase that from it. It's the bygone days. A statue of limitations. I died by no, it was a bunch of us guys in, in high school, <laughs> and we all dressed up like gangsters. Elliot Ness was on TV at the time. We all dressed up like mobsters and stuff, pinstripes. So we bought them at the secondhand store, big wide ties and brims down over our heads and everything. And we walked in, about 30 of us at one time. We were all standing around, you know, looking dangerous. And I walked up with a note, and I laid it down and said, may I have change for this dollar, please? <laughs> Well, we had a lot of fun explaining that at the police station. <laughs> Amen. In other words, I'm telling you, don't, don't. <laughs> Paul said it. It's hard to kick against the pricks. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> don't try to fight against the system here. You're going to lose every time. But God came, Jesus came to this world to fill believers with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And it did not happen until Jesus ascended into heaven. Read it in Colossians, the first chapter. It says, this mystery was hidden from generations and generations. Moses didn't have it. Elijah didn't have it. Elisha didn't have it. Daniel didn't have it. Samson didn't even have it. But this is revealed unto you. What is it? Christ in you. The hope of glory. Listen. I don't know what the world thinks of me like I could care less, but I'm telling you one thing. Uh, they're, they're never going to love me because they hated Jesus. And if you're looking for love out here in all these places, you're looking for love in the wrong place. There's only one way to find love, and that's through God, and we show love one to another. The world is not going to love you. They're going to find reason. and I mean, You can say something wonderful, and they'll find fault with it. You know why? They're full of the devil. 
They're not godly people. Why waste your time chattering to people that aren't even interested in what you're saying? Well, I delivered my soul. Well, deliver your soul and move on. There are people out here who really need a blessing in this world. There are people who are really hungry. There are people who are sick. There are people who are suffering right now. And if anybody cared about anybody, why aren't they shutting down the abortion clinics? Why aren't they burning down crack houses? Now, that'd be a good protest, wouldn't it? Why don't we all get together and find all the crack houses and go burn them down? Let's riot. There's a riot I'd, I'd join in. Let's burn the crack houses down. I'm not going to bother the guy who got a store down here. Every once in a while, you might want to go in there and buy a bagel or something. Amen. But the truth is, child of God, we're, we're on the wrong track here. And people can see normalcy. They can see truth in what they're saying. But there is only one truth, and that is Jesus Christ. He didn't say, I'm going to tell you the truth. He said, I am the truth. He didn't say, I'm going to show you a way. He said, I am the way. I'm not going to give you life one day in pie in the sky over across Jordan in the sweet by and by. He said, I am the life. He said something else too. I am the resurrection. Woo! Hallelujah. I felt a little of that resurrection power just then. Normally, I just run around scream and shout and fall out on the floor and kick my heels. But I've gotten re the truth is, child of God, when you study the Bible, read the Bible for what it actually says to you. And you say, well, that's all too hard to understand. Well, grow up. Shame on you. There is no reason not to read the Bible. If you can't read, and I, the, the King James Version of the Bible is not even written in King James English. If you read in the front of it, it says it's been paraphrased. King James, Labakweed Natisha. What, what does that mean? Well, in the beginning, God. Well, who would know that? That's not in, in the beginning, God. That, that's in modern English from the 1800s. You and I need to understand something. If you can't read uh, this English that's in the King James Version of the Bible, buy a different version. The Amplified that, that Brother Kevin reads all the time. It explains everything. It'll tell you what it actually says, and in the parentheses, it'll put words in there for a meaning to explain it to you. But it doesn't change the word. You have no excuse. You have no excuse to not know what the Bible says. You have no, there is no excuse. If you know what the Bible says, I promise you, you will not be deceived in these last and evil days. If you know the word of God, anything that is said to you that doesn't ring true to the word of God. It's as it's, it's silly to me to listen to some of these interpreters of the Bible. I mean, it's silliness to me to listen to them. It's, it, it's like somebody saying to me, one and one is nine. And they think if they say it again, one and one will be nine. And if they really believe it in their heart, one and one will be nine. But I'm telling you right now, one and one has never been nine. Amen. I don't even know if one and one is two. Because Jesus said, if any two of you are gathered together, there am I in the midst. Come on, say amen. amen. Huh? These things are too wonderful for me to explain. The truth is, child of God, we're living in the world where there is a devil that is busy working on people's minds. He wants to dominate and control your mind. And yet, no matter how hard the devil works on my mind, if it sounds like one and one is nine, something doesn't ring true about it. You should get that much in the spirit. You should get deep enough in the spirit to know when the devil is lying to you because if the devil opens his mouth, it's a lie. You don't know that unless you know the scripture where it says the devil is a liar. He was a liar in the beginning and he always will be a liar. The devil's not going to change because of you. The devil is a liar. He lies. 
First thing you ought to do is somebody tells you a lie, you ought to put a label on them in your mind. That's a liar. Yeah, well, you don't you question everything they say after that. Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> Six o'clock news don't mean nothing to me. I think they, they, they can't even tell their name correctly. You get the people on television, in the news media, they don't even use their own names. You want to know why? If somebody knew their real name, they'd go give them a treatment. Hallelujah. You and I need to understand something right now. We're in a place where there is a manipulation for people's minds. And the battle, oh, somebody said, well, brother, oh, the devil wants my heart. No, your heart beats blood. That's not it. Huh? With a heart man believeth, I know it. But their heart can't believe, it can't even think. Up here in your brain, it's got to send it a signal to make it even beat. If your brain don't send the signal, it don't beat anymore and blood don't go nowhere. Your heart doesn't believe. What he was talking about is the center of your emotions. That's here. There is a battle, a spiritual battle going on in the high places. I always thought that was in the high seats of government. No, this is the highest place on me. This is where the battle's going on. The devil's trying to rule here. If the devil can get in here, he's got the whole body. If the devil can control your thinking, he'll control your whole actions, everything you do. You'll, and you'll, you know what the devil will make you do? He'll make you justify it. Well, I did it, and I had a good reason. Well, if it ain't in the Bible, you ain't got no good reasons. And how do you know it's in the Bible if you don't read it in the Bible? You know, I enjoy reading books about the Bible. You know, my grandmother, um, <laughs> when she was 68 years old, she died that same year. When she was 68, I bought her, uh, you know, because she'd just sit and read the Bible all the day long, you know, in her rocking chair that my grandfather made, handmade. And uh, she'd read the Bible, and she loved the Bible. She'd turn around, and she'd quote scriptures at me. And I bought her Matthew Henry's commentaries. You know that? Oh, there, there's a stack of commentaries on the Bible. There's more words in the commentaries than there is in the Bible. They more, wrote more about the Bible than there is in the Bible itself. There, you stack them up, and I got the big volumes, of, you know, leather covered and, and gold lame and all of that stuff. They're as tall as my head was. I stacked them all up, and I said, oh, Lord, you'll never get through all of these. And so I left them with her, and I'm out there right on the road somewhere. And so I thought I'd call her on her birthday, and I said, Mommy, because that's what I called her. I said, Mommy, how are you liking those commentaries? She said, well, they're pretty easy to understand if you use the Bible to interpret them. And the commentaries are to interpret the Bible. <laughs> but she wouldn't have nothing of it. She, she knew what the Bible said, chapter and verse, and I ain't playing. She didn't misquote them either. She knew exactly what the Bible said, and she lived by them too. You and I need to understand that all of... And there is so much garbage in this world. Uh, I stopped watching religious TV for them trying to tell me what's going to happen at the end of time. They don't know. I know what they're saying ain't what's going to happen. They're teaching you, you're going to escape here. Are you planning for the great escape? Well, that's why you don't have to worry about anything. Well, I don't care what's happening in the world because we're all going to be gone anyway. We're not going to be here for the worst of it. We're not going to be here for any of it. Well, I'm going to ask you a few simple questions here. Why did God make greater in you than he who is in the world if you ain't even going to be here? When you're needed and you ain't going to be here. Why did God say, I give you power over all the power of the devil and nothing by any means shall harm you if you ain't going to be in a fight with the devil? The church better wake up here. 
God wants to fill you with the Holy Ghost so he can give you power over all the power of the devil. If you ain't got it now, you better stop praying for it. Hallelujah. The devil is a liar. And if he could get Adam and Eve to eat, a, eat a, the forbidden fruit, what do you think he can do to you? And all he did was ask one question. Here's what it was. Hath God said, did he truly say this? Did God really say this? Listen, I get this from the Middle East all the time. Hath, did God really say that? Did God really mean that? I get it from university students who are trying to be ex excellent preachers. Did God really mean that? Does it really say that? And I say, oh, good God, you got a Bible. Read it. I don't make stuff up. I don't quote God and change the words to it. A real man and woman of God don't have to change the word of God to explain some mystery. There's enough of a mystery that I'm even here. I'll tell you, it's a mystery that I'm here. I don't understand it. I don't understand how I could be born in a dirt floor log cabin in eastern Kentucky and travel as much as I have and pray for as many people as I have. Why did God choose me? When I was dying, Jesus came into the room and healed me. Why? Why? Oh, well, brother, I've had them say they've got all kinds of reasons. Well, you must be special. Well, I ain't special. Matter of fact, I'm a lot more worldly than most of you are. <laughs> I think thoughts I, would, I wouldn't even share with you. Amen. The truth is, child of God, I'm not special. And let me tell you now, you better come down off the cross because you ain't Jesus. Well, what are we supposed to do, Brother Ross? I am a sinner saved by the grace of God. God loved, and he didn't love me more than he loves everybody else in this world. As a matter of fact, God has made of one blood all the people of this world. All of us. God loves everybody. He would not, it's not his will that any should perish. Not one. God doesn't want to lose a single one. He'll actually leave the 90 and 9 and go try to save the one that is lost. I get condemned about this all the time. You know, uh, I, I, I don't think I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm old and I can't do what I want to do anymore. You know, child of God, we have a short window to obey God. Better get busy. I don't know why. You, you explain to me. I am the only preacher I know in all of Detroit and Michigan that said there's nothing to this COVID virus if you're a child of God. All the rest of them closed their those faith hypocrites those faith hypocrites on television they canceled everything and they went hiding in their bunkers where nobody will touch them and uh, they, they do their sermons in front of bad cameras in the basements and think they're preaching the gospel shame on them I'm going to tell you I am not going to die with something that is as stupid as that Come on, say amen. If I die, it's going to be because somebody martyred me, not because some little insect came along or some little virus. That ain't going to do it. Hallelujah. It's got to be something grand, spectacular. I ain't going to give up that easy. Come on, say amen. You can't either. You can't give up. You can't turn loose in this world. You can't let... I'm going to tell you, four people on television four people four one two three four I can tell you their names I see their faces when they did it when they announced it I said the economy is going to crash in seven days well, that's what they wanted apparently that's what they wanted they wanted the United States to fall huh Babylon fell in one hour you can say, man, read it in a history book. 
Huh? Read it in the Bible. Daniel said it fell in one hour. Babylon, <laughs> Babylon, who ruled over the world, has fallen. I tell you right now, anything that man builds can be destroyed. But what God builds, you cannot destroy it, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Hallelujah. I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now that's what I'm joining. I joined that. <laughs> I'm in the gates of hell shall not prevail against me part. Hallelujah. Antichrist, well, you got to worry about it. He's going to, he going to, when it gives you the, the shot for the virus, he's going to put a computer chip inside that we're all going to receive the mark of the beast. Would you get over it here? All of this doctrine and interpretation is written in 1848, and people are still holding on to this as though it's gospel, but it was written by man. Mary McDonnell. The woman that was had the vision, John Darby, Richard Allen, they're the ones who wrote this. This is what people, and Clarence Larkin drew it all in a book, and, and everybody said, oh, well, look, look, here's a chart. It's all charted out. It tells you when it's going to happen and how it's going to happen. I, in my lifetime, they have predicted the end of the world 34 times. That's almost one every two years. The end of the world is going to happen. Did you know 10, 11 years ago on the front cover of Time magazine, they predicted that there would be an ice age, that ice would cover everything from the North Pole all the way down to the Great Lakes. It would be 20 feet of ice. And then they said, well, we can't make any money on that. So what they decided to do, now it's going to be hot. <laughs> Polar bears can't find a place of a lump, lump of ice to swim on. They, huh? Polar bears doing fine. If you want to know who's not doing fine, it's all of these morons out here that are running this government because everything you say that is a lie, it is recorded. Some of them are written volumes. They've written volumes of lies. You have to understand something. The devil is after your mind. And wherefore, what did Paul say do? Put on the whole armor of God. You ain't getting no armor. You're not getting a sword. You're not getting a shield. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, because these are spiritual gifts. You look at the spirit. You, you got your spiritual eyes open. You see my breastplate of righteousness. Well, I can't see. It looks like a nice shirt, but what is a nice shirt? <laughs> I can tell you where to buy one in Paris. <laughs> the thing is exactly like it. The truth is, child of God, you have to understand something. We are engaged in the battle of a lifetime. You talk about war of the worlds, war in the heavenlies. Ain't no war in the heavenlies. The war is down here. What well, angels already won that one. There ain't no devil going up to heaven. Amen. Devil ain't going to go up there. Uh, you, you in the Old Testament now thinking the devil's going to try to overthrow God. The devil can't overthrow God, and he knows it. He tried it before, and that's how he got cast down to this earth. So now he's going to try the next best thing. He's going to try to get you to give your heart to the devil. Your mind, your spirit, what you think, what you do, how you treat your neighbor. Because the crazy thing is, I got news for you right now. We hate certain groups of people. We just see them coming. You can start getting suspicious. You know, I'm in the Middle East, uh, you can take this for what it's worth. In the Middle East, the Jews would not have anything to do with me in Israel. I never got invited to one of their houses. Now, I went another time, and my religion was stamped Jew, Jewish, Juden. And when that happened, and I wore a Star of David, and I, I, I dressed like they dressed, they took me everywhere. 
I went on, uh, on the Temple Mount and talking to a young Muslim man, and uh, he said, have you ever been in, I sure I've been in a mosque. I've been in Kharim al-Sharif. I've been here many times. I said, but I have never been in Al-Aqsa. He said, well, come and go with me. And so we went in there. I met everybody, and I said, I'll tell you what. I'm here for two weeks. Convert me. They tried every, after four days, the guy came to me and he says, you know, you, you, <laughs> you just don't come back anymore. It ain't, it ain't doing you no good. You know why? I wouldn't give up Jesus. But the, my point is this. The hospitality, the kindness shown to people, to strangers, was extraordinary. And now I, I have to, they, they think I'm going to turn around and tell everybody that whole nation's going to hell. Not God can't save any of them because of their beliefs. What can I tell you? Jesus died for them. Is anybody listening to me now? What our big problem is, ain't none of you got enough Holy Ghost to go over there and preach to them. Well, they'll kill you. Maybe they won't. How many remember Doubting Thomas in the Bible? You know, the doubter, they called him Doubting Thomas, but that was a lie of the denomination that was trying to do away with what he did. But Thomas, listen to this. Thomas went to India. Thomas was the first one that called Jesus my Lord and my God. Thomas recognized that Jesus was God. The other disciples had been sitting there. They saw Jesus walk through the wall without opening the door. And they didn't say that. But Thomas, when he got there and touched Jesus in the pot nail prints and thrust his hand in his side, he knelt and he said, my Lord and my God. Well, that Thomas is the one I'm talking to you about. Thomas went to India. Hold on, now, this is good. You ought to get your book out somewhere and read how all the apostles died Thomas went there and uh, I've been at this very spot I went there for a reason I went there for a meeting uh, uh, in Tiravilla, India I've got pictures up here of about 100,000 people in the crowd and me preaching and uh, uh, every man that I shook hands with his name was Thomas <laughs> well you're Thomas what now and you're Thomas what and, and well my, no no you can call me this because my middle name is Thomas and so I, everybody and I said why is everybody named Thomas what happened here he said we're all named after the apostle Thomas and I said why now right there at the burning gats they call them in Tiravilla right on the Ganges River I went down there one day to see the place where this happened doubting Thomas when they were trying to throw him out of the city he walked out and they were, they were they'd gotten hostile anybody that tells you that Hinduism is a kind and gentle religion as long as you're doing what they accept it's all right but they're just as mean as uh, Pentecostals you know against Catholics and Baptists and so uh, oh I shouldn't have said that because Pentecostals don't think they're mean and Baptists don't either Unless you come in with a short skirt on and, and lipstick. Then they might ask you to leave. <laughs> but listen to this. I went down there, the same place that t they took Gandhi's ashes and put them in the Ganges River. And they said right here on this spot, Thomas, when they were chasing him, he walked out into the Ganges River and stood there. And while everybody was watching him and they're getting ready to throw spears at him and shoot him with arrows he said listen and he carried a bucket with him and he said I'm going to throw this bucket of water in the air it'll stay there in the air until I finish telling you about Jesus and he threw it up in the air and the water hung there in the air and people fell down they thought Thomas was a god. They said, well, I've never seen that. And, and so he, lit, he told them about Jesus. Forty 
thousand people were saved and gave their heart to the Lord within one week. That's why in all of India, one area, only one, is completely Christian. That's at that spot. Uh, and the rest of it, Anwar Pradesh, you got uh, Pakistan on one side, uh, uh, Bangladesh on the other side, uh, surrounding Hindus in the middle, and they've got about 40 different sects of Hindus, different kinds, and then you got the Golden Temple. In, in the middle there uh, where the Sikhs are, where they wrap their heads in turbans, and most people, when they see them, they think they're, uh, they're Islamic, but they're not. They're, it's a different, completely different religion. We don't know enough about them to even actually talk to them, probably. But the truth is, this is one thing that everybody will respond to. When you have the love of Christ in your heart and you minister Jesus to them, and tell them how Jesus died for them, it melts the stoniest heart. Maybe not the first time, but I promise you, you tell them about Jesus, and somebody said, well, I'll show you my faith uh, by my sermons. And James said, go ahead and do that. I'll show you my faith by my works. You don't have to run around saying, I love everybody, and then, you know, I don't know if you ever, I ever told you about my Aunt Rosie. She would stand up, and she'd, Sophie, she'd stand up, and she'd close her eyes as tight as she could in church, and she said, God gave me love in my heart. I love everybody I can see. <laughs> don't be that way. Instead, we've got work to do here. I ain't playing. We've got work to do. Get in touch with me. Go to the, uh, the share page. Click like. Do whatever you have to do. Go to the page and where it says con contribute. Please do that. <laughs> if I told you I was a poor preacher, as, as poor as a church mouse, I've got traps set out for mice. Need your help. Pray. Get in touch with me.